And we are live. How's it going, everyone? What's happening? Happy Friday. Hope everyone is good. Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So today, this is the uh, the return of Friday headlines. If you think that I've sort of become lazy with it, I'm only going to do it on weeks where there's kind of room for it. If there's, you know, a packed fight week where I've got loads of stuff planned in terms of between rounds and stuff, I, I won't do them. But on weeks where there's uh, a free Friday, I will be... Uh, talking through some of the headlines. It's been a good week for headlines, and uh, I've actually just been sat watching the uh, Fowler versus Smith weigh in, and I've got to say, it is, uh, it's really got the juices flowing now, because it was a uh, very exciting bit of needle between the trainers and stuff. Uh, Shannon Courtney failed to make weight as well. Cheeseman and Williamson both looked like they were bang up for it, so really excited and uh, looking forward to this one. If you see me at any point sort of look away, it's because I've got me... Uh, my notes up so I can go through everything but I'm so excited for this weekend now I'm actually going away but I'm going to make a, an effort to sort of do an all nighter for it, I'm going to stay up right through the night, I'll leave my Twitter down below if you want to kind of follow my updates, at some point on the channel I'm going to start doing live, live watch alongs, I would have done it for this weekend but obviously because I'm away I, I can't do it I'm afraid but we'll still be doing the podcast and stuff and uh, I'll be re reacting on Twitter and everything like that so uh, let's get into some headlines so I've got three headlines, and then I'll talk about three fights that have been announced as well. Um, the headlines, first one, Dillian White confirmed as, you know, mandatory, but also confirmed that he will get his shot at the Fury vs. Wilder winner. Obviously, this is good news for, for Dillian White, good news for his fans. Um, I've spoken on Dillian White before. Um, I'm not a Dillian White hater by any means. I don't particularly rate him, but I find him, I find him quite funny. I find him quite amusing. I think some of the heavyweights talk a lot of nonsense, but I think with him he's quite light-hearted and quite funny with it, but also serious at the same time. So, you know, he does deserve a, an opportunity, but he's got a tough fight coming up against Otto Valin, and one now that uh, he might regret taking a little bit, because uh, some people say, you know, he's just got to play it safe and get the win there, but I actually think fighting safe won't get him the win. He needs to go out there and really go after Valin and sort of put it on him, really, because if he boxes on the back foot like he tends to do, he just invites pressure on himself and it only takes one moment for White to unravel a little bit. So uh, I think he has to go after him and sort of take this matters into his uh, matters into his own hands. Um, a bit like uh, Bradis did against Gowacki, where he, I know it was dirty, but he went out there and just smashed him and got the job done. Um, sometimes when you've got something standing in your way, you just got to smash through it rather than playing it safe and making sure you don't lose. So, yeah, it'll be good for him to get an opportunity. And uh, for us Brits, could you imagine uh, Tyson Fury versus Dillian White? It'd be a big fight here in the UK. I don't know if it would land here or whether they take it over to America, but I'm telling you now, that would be a, a really big fight. Still not convinced it's happened. I've always said I'd, I just have this feeling. I mean, if Wilder wins, that obviously throws this up in the air a little bit, but. I've always felt that Dillian White would get his hands on a vacant title at some point. You know, Tyson Fury isn't necessarily one to, you know, fulfil his obligations and he might look to do something else. But uh be interesting. You know, White does deserve his opportunity, if he, especially if he beats Violin as well. He'll be well on his way, but that's a massive fight. So, uh, yeah, maybe next year we get a big old British heavyweight fight. Not the one that I'm sure people want, but it'll be... It'll be interesting. I've kind of always thought that White and Joshua would get their hands on each other before White got his hands on anyone else. So uh, let's see how that goes. Let me know down below, guys, how you sort of see that. Obviously, I'm kind of ruling Wilder out there, but even White and Wilder over in America would be would be loads of fun as well with the, the sort of personalities and even the fight. You know, White would try and set about him, but it only takes one shot for him to be flat on his back. So, yeah, that's uh, an interesting situation with the WBC. I just hope they stick to their guns and enforce it. The next piece of news I wanted to talk about is uh, Tiafimo Lopez versus George Cambosis has finally got a it's got a home on the zone. Um, glad it's getting sorted. I'm kind of you know giving up on this fight now, but when it gets to fight week, I'm sure I'll I'll sort of be able to muster up the enthusiasm enthusiasm for it. It's not a big enough fight or a, a mouth watering fight for it to drag on this long. Um, but you know I think in all honesty, I'm not a Tiafimo Lopez hater, but I do think this has been a bit of a learning curve for him and judging by his interviews this week I don't think he really has learned anything from it because you know Triller have still had to give him some form of payout he'll still get paid well on his own and stuff but you know there's been a few situations this year where he's got a bit big for his boots I think a little bit um you know originally going against the Mayweather versus Logan Paul pay-per-view date I know he they said he caught covid and stuff but I do think that there's probably more to that than than sort of meets the eye um, you know, kind of got a bit big, 
big for his boots there and you know October 4th as well that was going up against the NFL and things like that you know he's just had a he's had a few situations with money and everything as well where perhaps it hasn't been as sort of rosy as he planned out for himself so I think it's a good lesson but he needs to learn from it and not sure if he will but be interesting and by the time it comes around I think you know he would have had a bit of a layoff he would have been made weight a couple of times he's obviously apparently had COVID as well so, you know, he might not be at his, his best. He's on a good run at the minute as well, where he's kind of due a bad performance. And Cambosis is the type of guy that can sort of expose that and get and ask a lot of you physically. So it'll be interesting to see, but I'm glad that's getting sorted. In terms of time frame, Tio has said, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the, the interviews with him, but he looks so skinny. So he looks like he's ready to sort of jump in a fight right away. And I think they'll look to do it in... You know, November, December time, he's saying that he's got a little one due uh, at the end of November and wants it done before that. I don't know if Eddie's kind of got availability on his schedule, but he's looking at doing a fight for Devin Haney. Maybe you could try and make that a bit of a double header, try and build that up a little bit. But hopefully it can land before the end of the year, because if it's in January, February, again, it's just going on for way too long. So hopefully we get this done very soon. But I have more confidence in Eddie and his own to, to get it over the line finally. So that was another bit of news. And then the final bit of news before I talk about the fights, just having a little look down. David Price retired. I actually got asked, you know, kind of my thoughts on this. And Pricey kind of had a soft spot. You know, a lot of people had a soft spot for Pricey because he was, you know, a really good guy. I've actually met him on occasion before. He's an absolute giant. But he's a, a really friendly person. You know, kind of never really speaks badly of people or anything like that. But, you know, he had he had too much expectation placed on him in the early years. You know, reason being obviously the Olympics and stuff, but it was a it was a bad time for heavyweight boxing. Not a great time for British boxing in general as well. And um, so, you know, he he had a lot of expectation off the back of Beijing, sort of placed on his shoulders, and I don't think he was necessarily ready for it. He had to lose to Tony Thompson as well, but he never really learned from his mistakes, and his his problems always sort of tended to stick with him in terms of his stamina and being a bit chinny. Um, but, you know, a fun fighter, that was one of the things. You either He was either going to knock someone out or he was either going to get knocked out. And that's always fun. You know, some of the fights he's been involved in. The Tony Thompson, you know, the second one where he had him hurt and then got knocked out himself. The Povetkin one where he got hurt, then hurt him and then got knocked out in one of the most brutal knockouts. And he's been involved in some fun things. Obviously, schooled Dave Allen as well, which sort of reminded us of, you know, the... The fundamental side to his game, which was a, a sort of nice reminder, but I was at his last fight against Chisora, which was quite sad to see because Ch Chisora is not anything special. And you know, he dealt with him quite easily that night on the Taylor Pro Grey card, stepped in as a late minute replacement. But uh, yeah, you know, sort of happy for David Price. And you know, for some people, success is relative. I know a lot of people saw him becoming a, a world champion. But you know, becoming a British and Commonwealth world cha uh, British and Commonwealth champion is is still good in its own right for and for his talents. I think that's sort of where his ceiling was at, kind of European level. So fair play to him, and I hope he has a, a good retirement. I see him at the weigh in earlier today. They sort of called him out and got him up on stage, and he he did a wave to everyone. So uh, wish him a happy retirement. And then the the three fights that have been announced this week, there's actually four because one's just come to my head. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on all of them. If you saw my video yesterday, I'm now doing punch perfect predictions when fights get announced. So I'm going to have predictions for all these fights going out over the next week or so. Um, and I'm going to talk about them. One is out already, and that's Tank Davis versus Rolly Romero. I've given my thoughts on that, but if you want to hear why I think Tank destroys him, go and check out my Punch Perfect prediction video. The next one is Lomachenko versus Comey. This is a good fight for Lomachenko if he's not going to get, you know, a, a Lopez or a Haney or anyone like that. I actually said at the start of this year, I want to see him have that Lopez rematch, but if he's not going to, I would quite like to see him prove that he's still still elite and still able to compete his body hasn't kind of given up on him in in any way um, and I thought the way he could do that by his, by fighting the likes of Nakatani Komi kind of fringe sort of top 10 guys um, and you know I said he would destroy Nakatani which he did I think he'll do the same to Komi Komi's a bit more dangerous but I think he'll win this fight as well and you know hopefully next year someone looks at Loma and says yeah I'm going to take that opportunity and potentially backfires i think devin haney is desperate for an opponent i think eddie and whoever's involved with devin haney should pay up big for that i think top rank would accept it as well but i also would like to see the lopez rematch but i'm not sure whether lopez kind of still has that in his sights so it'll be interesting to see but that's been made for december the 11th so looking forward to seeing loma again this year two fights for him is really good i'm, I'm glad that he's fighting he hasn't been fighting regularly enough over the last couple of years and um, so good to good to have him back 
Uh, the next one is a fight I really like is Ryan Garcia versus Jojo Diaz. Now, this hasn't got like an official kind of date or anything yet. They're still waiting. I actually think we'll get an announcement this weekend or early next week. But listen, we're not going to be happy unless Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis, Teofimo Lopez, Devin Haney and Lomachenko are all fighting each other, if we're being honest. But there's too much politic politics in boxing, unfortunately. Too much ego, too much pride. So these guys have got to fight the next best things. And Haney versus Linares is good. You know, Lopez versus Cambosis is decent. Um... Jojo Diaz against Fortuna was decent. Ryan Garcia against Jojo Diaz is, is is decent. You know, these they're not what we want, but if you're gonna get the next best thing, fighting these kind of fringe world level guys, the sort of top ten guys, is is decent enough. And I think Jojo Diaz is a is a really good good fighter. Sometimes lets himself down in the way of uh you know, on the scales and stuff, he doesn't come in in the best shape. Sometimes lets himself down in his performances. He's just not busy enough. But, you know, Jojo Diaz has tried to reinvent himself a couple of times. In terms of his image, I mean, if you go back through various stages of his career, he looks completely different to what he looked like at the start. Um, so he's reinvented his image a lot. But he's also reinvented his style. You know, he was kind of a, a bouncy sort of volume type puncher early on. But now he's sort of, his, his feet have not slowed up, but he's put on the weight and... You know, he's sort of become more of a selective inside boxer. And it's been, you know, quite impressive in some of his performance. The, the sort of Tevin Farmer performance um, against Javier Fortuna last time out. Obviously, the Rack Me Off fight was a bit of a different story because that could have gone either way. But he came in way overweight, lost his title on the scale. If he'd have been fit, I'd have fancied him to sort of just edge the decision in that one. But he's a good fighter and he's an intelligent fighter. And the one thing that I'm not sure with Ryan Garcia yet is just how intelligent he is. Um, I've been really impressed with him in the Luke Campbell fight. That shot he got knocked down with was huge and he just responded to it really well. Started to set up that left hook um, where he was sort of going to the head but then delivered it to the body. Luke Campbell's, uh, you know, uh, when he was, you know, actually fighting, was a top 10 guy in the lightweight division. He was world class without having won a world title. And I think, you know, Ryan Garcia proved he's got the talent when he beat him back in January. And when you think, you know, to beat Luke Campbell and then if he beat Jojo Diaz in the space of the year, it's pretty good going and it's good experience for him who, of all those young lightweights for me, needs that world level experience because he his talent isn't quite there. But in terms of kind of natural assets and, you know, God-given abilities, Ryan Garcia is blessed with a lot of them. That speed, that fast twitch, you're born with it or you're not and he's got it in abundance. And also his team. He's got an amazing team in Eddie Reynoso. No matter what you say, he's got great sparring. He learns a lot from Canelo, learns a lot from the other fighters in the gym. So his kind of room for development will be brought along and he will improve. So be interested in this for Ryan and it's not a foregone conclusion. Do you favour Ryan Garcia? Yes, um, especially with the size as well. Diaz is quite small at 135. Ryan Garcia is huge. He's probably the tallest of all of those young lightweights. And uh, yeah, that'll make it difficult because uh, his chin's right out there, but you have to kind of be big enough to expose that. So I think Ryan Garcia will win, but this is a tough fight between two Golden Boy fighters. But after this, let's make the Devin Haney fight. There's nothing stopping in it. You know, they're both on the zone at the minute. I know that Golden Boy will probably move to Triller, but, you know, with the WBC being able to, you know, enforce this fight, come on, Ryan, let's, let's get this done. Let's make this fight, because for me, that's the fight in the division. I, not just, not so much the one I really want to see, but it's the one that makes the most sense right now. So we need to see that fight. And then lastly is uh, Arta Baterbia versus Marcus Brown's been announced. Arta Baterbia, in terms of opponents outside of, you know, Bivol, outside of Joe Smith, you know, there's not a lot of names there for him, but Marcus Brown is one of the ones I'm okay with. A world-level guy that's won a, you know, won a world title and is sort of in the top 10, top 10 to 15. Been a bit inactive, obviously has good Olympic experience, has had problems outside of the ring and stuff recently as well, which don't condone in any way. But he's, uh, in terms of an opponent, he's better than what it could be for Baterbiev. And I think Baterbiev will win this well and, and in style, but he's getting older and you know, some of his performances aren't as eye-catching as they once were, so it'll be interesting, but uh, you got to favour Baterbiev there. But like I say, I will do a punch-perfect prediction for all those videos where I break it down in more detail. That wraps up my Friday headlines, guys. Please uh, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I will uh, be back on Sunday with Charlie doing the podcast, reviewing everything that's happened this weekend. Such a good weekend of boxing. I hope you all enjoy it. You know, let me know down below your thoughts on this, guys. Get at me in the... Uh, in the community tab for 
you know any thoughts on any fights let me know who you fancy in each of them and uh, yeah looking forward to catching up with you all next time thanks for watching and enjoy the boxing this weekend cheers everyone